Welcome back on First Health Chat by Delta Train Innovation Lab. Today we are going to talk about MLOps for Dummies. Thank you to a wonderful tool, K3 AI. Let me introduce my bad on crime, Gianni Rosso Gallina. Hello, Gianni. Hello, everybody. And uh, Matteo. Hello, everybody. And finally, our special guest. Hello, Alessandro. Hey, hello, everyone. Okay, let's start with the presentation of this tool. What is k AI? Sure. So, what is k AI? Sim super simple. So, k AI is a lightweight tool uh, with the idea that we want to provide a simple way to get an entire, let's call it an AI infrastructure stack in minutes, not days. Means taking care of all the complexity around installing, deploying, configuring Kubernetes, installing, deploying, configure the AI tools of your choice, and finally even just run your code on it. Uh, so it's really super simple. And from an infrastructure standpoint, what means? Means having one single tool, one single CLI, the CLI should take care of both the clusters and what we define as the plugins. So any AI tools, MLflow, all Qflow components, Argo workflows, Technon CD, um, and, and Jupyter Notebooks, and so on and so on and so on. In the most simple way, in the most logic way, we can get there. So the idea today is actually to show you how we, we, we can do that and how easy it is to, to do that. So in a nutshell, this is basically the really super high level architecture of k we basically take care of uh, the configuration where you can customize the behavior of K2AI, basically injecting uh, a JSON config within a, the, the K2AI folder in your .config folder. That is really the, the standard default to, to provide the configuration files within Unix Linux um, system. Um, and also creating a .K2AI folder in your own directory. And in that directory, basically, we basically install the tools we need under the hood, all the configuration of the kubeconfig files, everything that we need actually to operate the cluster and the plugins later. Once it's that, basically the logic is super simple. It's really human logic. Um, k is what you do, is your entry point. Then you basically ask you, what you want to do? Uh, I want to work on the cluster, or I want to work on a plugin. And then you basically decide what to do next. I want to get a cluster, and actually, I want to deploy a cluster, or I want to remove it, or I want to list it. And exactly the same logic applied to the plugin. I, k I want to work on a plugin, and I want to deploy this plugin, or I'm going to remove it, or I want to list it. Um, finally, we also have the, the k I run. And the k I run is, again, a, is a simple, sim super simple command to say, I want to pick up this code that is in this Git repo, um, I want to run this specific file against this specific plugin, let's say MFlow, or let's say Qflow pipeline, against this specific cluster. So we, we simply use the, the human logic to say, these are the action and the sub-action I want to run. And this way, I don't really need to learn you know, extensively uh, commands. So, to give you a more detail that and, and literally start to work this, let's let's go through the, the entire cycle. So the first step would be basically k i download. And then we will follow up with uh, in, initialize k i deploy first a cluster, then a plugin, and finally run a code there. So let's go for the demo. And of course, if you have any question, if our audience has any question, feel free to actually post them and we'd be more than happy to, to explain that. So let's start with the k download, how we do that. And I will basically use, really, I will start directly from my my, my really simple folders. Uh, let me just, first of all, um, open up this one and go to the k -i. Actually, we have a, a k in URL where you basically you can download that k -i. We have all the documentation. Let me just bring this a little bit more easier for you. And then you got the documentation there with a the quick start. So the easiest way is basically just uncreated um, a companion installation uh, script to do that. So all you have to do is just copy these and go there. 
here in this machine, copy the script, maybe. Let me do this. Oops, okay, sorry. This is my demo machine that actually is went there. Uh, I will say copy this and just execute it. It will then allow KTRI for you. Try to move KTRI directly in your, in your Bing directory, so already in the path. So if you're using sudo, we'll ask for sudo, and that's it. Once it's there, you can run KTRI, and you will get this nice menu there. Um, so we can start to explore the options. I say the first option is actually doing a hop. Hop means please initialize KTRI for me. So all I have to say is like KTRI hop, and it will start basically the, the installation. So what is asked me at the beginning is asked me for a GitHub path, a personal access token. It's a really simple personal access token that I just pasted here, and it will check against that to say, well, in order to avoid the limitation of the GitHub API, because we, we need to double check the, the various environment, the, the various plugin that you eventually want to install, just pass me the, this uh, GitHub token. And if you don't want me to ask me every time, I can actually save it on your computer and say yes. Say that, Kateria will basically go there, start to initialize the configuration, start to download all the tools, create the local database for Kateria that we need actually to operate all the plugins and the clusters, refresh the plugin list, and at this point, the job basically is done. So super simple, one command, Kateria app. Now, Kateria app is not just about initialize the, the command. Kateria app actually is also to up, update the command. So for example, if we are releasing a new plugin there, then basically you can do a Kateria app just to refresh the plugin list or the cluster list that we're going to support. So if I rerun Kateria app, I will see that basically it's just updating the plugins this time. So it's super simple. Now, my machine has nothing there. Uh, there's nothing there that actually can be executed. There's no cluster there, et cetera. But let's start to, um, to explore Kateria. I'm just reduce the, the fonts because just for uh, so all the things that Kateria can, can actually show me. So again, Kateria, I say that I want to explore the clusters. So I can say Kateria cluster. What you can do, deploy list remove. So Kateria cluster list all the configuration that you can run. And these are actually the options. You can install a cluster on a cloud provider like Siebel. You can install using Amazon AKS anywhere locally. You can use Docker in Docker, Kubernetes flavors like K3D or like Kind. You can use a, a really super lightweight Kubernetes cluster like K3S, the, the one that I will use in this demo. Or you can actually use uh, Tanzu, the VMware Tanzu Community Edition locally again. That is also even AKSA anywhere in Tanzu are kind and kind uh, Kubernetes cluster. Now you can also see the status uh, in the various tag and versions. Uh, the tag are there and the kind are there because later in the next release of K3i, we will be able to filter through K3i and say, hey, show me all the local, local cluster that I can deploy or show me only the cloud cluster I can deploy. Also, you see the status. Available means we already tested it. We know that it works perfectly and you can install it in development means that we are still reviewing this and eventually we will release pretty soon. So let's say that I want to install um, a K3S cluster. So the easiest way, and I do this again, is just say K3I, what you want to do, I want to work on a cluster. What you want to do on the cluster, I want to deploy the cluster. And what, you, what kind of cluster, dash T or dash dash type, I want to use K3S from that previous list, and I want to give a name to this cluster. Let's call it my cluster, and I execute. k will take upstream the latest version of K3S for you, if needed, sudo. We are basically using the K3S installation parameters. So we are not changing anything there. This is exactly the upstream project there. And in a nutshell, K3S will be up and running. What now, while clusters I'm waiting, uh, are supported? Sorry, Alessandro. Yeah, yeah. So let me just show you again the list in a, in a second once it will be over. And you actually can see that. I will show you also another things that are actually super important. So K3i cluster list dash dash all. This is the, the list that I can have. Okay, let me do this again because otherwise you cannot see it. So we just went to K3s. You can have K3D, kind, 
Amazon AKS Anywhere that can be plugged to your Amazon uh, management console through the Amazon connector. VMware Tanzu Community Edition as well. Sivo, that is a cloud native uh, so provider. So that is a cloud native Kubernetes cluster, basically. Uh, later, probably we will install also Azure and other typical cloud provider like GKE, AKS, and et cetera. Um, right. So it's pretty simple. Now, we install a cluster. So if I do the, the same command, but instead of saying uh, all, I say deployed, or in a more simple terms, dash D, it will say, oh, well, you just install a K2S cluster, it's installed, and it's now in my cluster. This way we can actually can operate against this cluster. Now, keep in mind that you don't need any tool for that. You don't need kube control, you don't need M chart, you don't need anything to operate against the cluster. We take care of everything there. Now, how you can customize these, let me show you briefly how actually the cluster are built. And I can go from here in the repositories, just let me increase a little bit the font. So the plugins are the real core of K3i. We just install K3S, so I'm going to show you K3S exactly for that. What we do is basically mimic the customized structure. So you have an EML file, and this actually explains how easy it is to build a plugin for K3I, by the way, where basically you say, okay, here's the metadata, uh, the name of a plugin, how is it will appear in the CLI, a short description, uh, your tag, local, whatever, what is the version? If it is the latest, is a specific version, whatever, the status of the plugin, so we know if we can install it, and then just give me the resources. Where I have to pay a look when I'm installing this, what are the dependencies there? In this case, I have only one single dependency, is the base folder. And in fact, if I come here and got in the base folder, I got the single name, plugin EML, and plugin EML basically has all the logic to install K2S, like, this is the way K2S suggests me to install. And in fact, if I go here and say K2S.io, I see that actually this is exactly the same command that I'm using in the plugin. Then I have uh, these extras here. This is an environment. This is mimic DM variables. Why I'm using that? Because this way you can actually, you can overwrite the default arguments that I'm passing to the install. For example, because in most of the AI tools, Qflow is an example, they are using Istio. I don't want to use traffic that is installed by default by K2S. And I also want to make the, the Kube config that K2S create writable and so I can copy it into the K2I folder. So this is the default, but you can pass an argument in the CLI simply doing something like that. Um, we install it through this way, but actually if I check the deploy, the deploy is as other capabilities like dash E extras. You can also say it quiet in case you are in a CI CD environment. Now to demonstrate that my cluster is actually up and running, I'm going to do something like this, something like this, export. I'm basically overwriting my kube config variable just to show you that actually I'm operating against a real cluster. This is not needed. This is just me to use a couple of tools to, to demonstrate that I'm trying to work. KNIS is another great CLI, and you actually you can see that my cluster is up and running. I don't have to do nothing here. I don't have to know nothing. I'm using KNIS now just to demonstrate that I'm doing something there, but actually it's not needed. So what's next? Oh, it's super simple. Let me get back to our slides. So we did K-Try download. We did K-Tray up, everything's ready. Now we're moving to deploy. We did the K-Tray deploy cluster, job done. Next, let's install a plugin. So let me just reduce the screen here and say K-Tray plugin, what? List, dash dash all as before. These are the current list of plugins that you can install through K-Tray. Airflow, Argo workflows, uh, I'm working on great expectations, Jupyter Lab, uh, KF means Qflow. So you can literally install every single component of Qflow. Qflow dashboard, Qflow Katib, uh, the MPI operators, notebooks, KF serve, there was the old KF serving, now it's being renamed to KF serve, 
have tensor board, uh, training operators means TensorFlow, PyTorch, and etc. Uh, KFPA means QFlow pipeline with Argo backend. KFPT is QFlow pipeline with Tecton backend. So we offer the two flavors, MLflow, and I'm working on rubrics. That is a, is a absolutely great open source project about exploring labeling um, text and data set, and create data set out of text uh, for development of NLP, for example. So all I have to do basically is just say something like k ai plugin. So this is a, I want to work on a plugin. Give me a name of a plugin, KFPA. Give me a target for the plugin, my cluster. It will take a, lot, a bit of time to do that. And I'm execute, oops, and I forgot something like, you want to want to you deploy the plugin actually sorry about that and i'm just executing it will take care of everything what means i'm basically evaluating everything that i need to install uh the qflow pipeline based on the upstream project of the qflow pipeline if i need to deploy any role on the qflow pipeline if i need to deploy any custom resource definition if i need to install even other stuff Again, while he's doing the, all this stuff, let me just switch back to the plugins and let's show you how the plugin works. Let me bring a couple. So you can see I have different kind of plugins, apps and commons. Apps are the default plugins, the one that I showed you before. For example, if I go in the KFP uh, based on that, the K3ML says, okay, you go for the base. And in the base, I have a different structure than before. And actually, you can perceive here different things that I can do here. First of all, what we do support. I can support customize. I can support cube control directly. I can support shell script. And later, we support also PowerShell script. So as long as your application has a way to be installed, we will take care of that. If it is an upstream project, I can grab the upstream project directly from there. Like in the case of customize, because I need to build the customized files before time, then I will try get the manifest, build the customized files, and then execute them exactly as Qflow tells me to do. In other cases, let me, for example, bring, um, I would say Jupyter, I think. In the case of Jupyter, you see I have an overlay folder exactly like in the customize, where I'm saying you start from the base, and the base will basically go to the, to the overlay. And in fact, in the base, I will see that actually I'm, I'm pointing to the overlay folder. And in the overlay folder, what I got, well, simply as it is, the overlay actually has a, the definition of my deployment. That also means, while we're waiting, that the config file that I saved in the k app is meant to point you to your custom plugin definition. So by default, you will point to the k ai plugin list, but you can override this and say, hey, I have my own plugin definition. I have my own plugin, GitHub repo or whatever, or local repo, and I can want to point to that where I have my personal, my private plugins. So let's see actually if we are still there. Well, we're still there. We will get in a minute. The result of this will be we will try basically to expose automatically um, the UI of the application to the user. Now, a couple of points here. Uh, the first point is that not all the cluster are the same. So that means that you see, actually, I'm, I'm even checking this one, for example, doesn't come from me. This one comes from uh, um, Qflow directly that is checking if the condition has been met. Now, everything should be there. Um, unfortunately, I'm on a AWS machine here, so the URL that you see here is not actually the URL that I should have, but if everything works, now this is a demo effect, but I should see Q4 pipelines. That's it. Cool. So I don't have to do anything, and I can't remove it after. Actually, the easiest way is that I remove the cluster, basically. But um, so I can literally go there. Now, what did be behind the lines? Uh, let's check what is just deployed for me. He literally went there, deployed all this stuff, configured all this stuff, and even 
if I double check the services, it went there in the case of MLI and changed the port to a not port to expose that to the port 3900. Now, just a small thing that we are keep working on this. Um, one of the limitation is that depending on the kind of Kubernetes flavor you're using, not always the not port can, can be worked out. To give you a practical example, if I'm using kind, um, in order to expose the not port to kind, uh, the original port of the container should be changed as well. If I'm using K3D, I can map the extra port, extra port um, I can do the extra extra map, ma mapping of the extra port, sorry, uh, automatically. If I'm using Tanzu or AWS, I have another behavior. So what we are working on is basically a simple way to provide the need to expose depending on the cluster in the simplest way. And I think I will be able to release this for the next release, maybe the, the one after, because it's a little bit complicated. But that's it. That's as it is. So let's say that, for example, I want to deploy another plugin and I want to say, okay, do I plug in on the same cluster, plug in deploy what? Um, MLflow and um, target is my cluster. Now, one super important thing, MLflow doesn't exist for Kubernetes. There's not a Kubernetes official installation of MLflow there. Okay? But k I take care of that. So I recreated basically the flavor, the, the, the ML flow transformer that in something you can install in Kubernetes, is installed Minio, is installed Postgres. Um, and basically everything's again up and running in minutes. As you can see, you don't have to do anything. You don't even know to know how to do something. All you have to do is just stare at your screen, wait for it to be finished. And once it will be finished, just point to the, to the URL or the port in my case that you want to use. So just wait for a few seconds, and MLflow is pretty, is pretty fast uh, from, from that point of view. I have a question uh, related yeah. to the command line. It's interesting, but how has it has been designed, implemented? It's similar to other tools I, I see, but are there any guidelines yeah. or, or? That's absolutely a great question. So I attempt uh, to follow this amazing open source project named Common Line Interface Guidelines that has been created by people that definitely knows how to write CLI better than me. Uh, these are, are the people behind, the authors behind. Uh, Anad Prasad, Ben Fishman, Kaltashan, Evan Parish. If you look at them, most of them, they, for example, uh, they create Docker Compose. So what is this project about? It's about how you should write a CLI that makes sense for human. And I, I absolutely encourage everyone that is working on a CLI to, to, to double check this, this amazing, um, this amazing uh, website. Uh, CLIG.dev is, is a GitHub project, by the way, is open source. And if you look through that, there's basically everything around that, like the basics, how you basically you should that, how you should write an help, how you should write the documentation, how you should treat the output or the errors, and even the sub commands and et cetera. How you, could be consistent and etc. They give you all the information and all the uh, best practices that you should follow. And I try to replicate exactly the same way for CLI. Um, so job done, everything's there. So if I come back here, I'm just copy and paste my URL here that is on that part. Now this part is not 319 by 315 and boom, I got ML flow done. And I can keep carry on. I mean, I keep doing other stuff like Jupyter and et cetera. And for all those, basically, we are there. We also have in the command, basically, we explain everything. We explain why you should use K3i for data scientists, for the ML operator, for the philosopher, if you want. The comma reference, that simply is like that. You can literally go there and check the command following the same logic. But also you have the tutorials, starting from scratch, how can I run something against my, my, my K2AI? And this actually led me to the last part of this. I want to run K2AI run. I highlighted that currently we support the, what I call the one-click approach on MLflow and Qflow. And by the way, keep in mind that thanks to one of our amazing contributors, 
we can run this in GitHub Action already. So all, everything that I'm showing he, here can be done on a GitHub Action. We are, we are also working on expose the results as a part of the GitHub Action flow, but we are, we are not completely there. So we are supporting ML flow, we are supporting Q flow, we are going to support R flow, we are going to support Argo uh, as well. So what means k 3 run? Let's try to, to see what's going on and what's happening. So I got another, oops, sorry. I got another, um, where it is, where it is, oh, it is. Another instance that is actually running here that is still ML flow like before. Um, in the K3AI repo, uh, we have a folder named sample. Here it is. Now, as you can see, I have two folders here, KFP and MLflow. In MLflow, there's a, a public representation. This is a clone of the XGBoost uh, example from MLflow that is using Conda, and it does everything there, and it explains exactly what you can find on MLflow example public folder. We, I just cloned that because to make it more simple for the people to use it. In the other folder, I have a really simple condition.pi. This is a standard KFP Qflow pipeline pipeline. Okay, nothing, nothing really fancy. It's just, just a simple pipeline. Now let's start from the first sample. The first sample is, okay, we run the cluster. We run our tools. Now the question is, how do I run my code there? Because in the end, my, that's my goal. My goal is not about knowing all this fancy stuff. My goal is actually to run my code and get my code there. Can k where I help there? So we have ML flow here, there's nothing there. And I come here and I'm just switch to the other um, example and say, okay, k 3 I run, what k 3 I run does, it's a little bit more complete, uh, complex as a, as a tool, but it simply says, what you want to do, k 3 I want to run something. And what you want to run, give me the source, where is your code? Give me a backend. What kind of code you're actually running? MLflow in this case. If you're in Qflow, because Qflow, the KFP SDK require an entry point, eventually you can pass an entry point. Like within that folder, I want to execute that specific file. Then eventually you can even pass me some extras. Like if you want to override the default parameters there. And finally, of course, you give me the target. So in my case, this means that I can say something like k 2 run what source what I want to run github.com k 2 sample the folder you are interested in, not simply the repo. We are not interested in the repo. We're interested in the specific folder. Means you can have multiple projects within the same, the same structure and we will point out only to that very one folder. Give me your backend, MLflow, and give me your target. This is uh, my cluster. Later, we will release the capability to deploy, run the same workload on multiple clusters at the same time. Or even do something like, if you do something, then you can actually do something else immediately after and et cetera. So like attaching multiple pipelines one after the other. You run it, what we do? Well, the first thing is, we are going to run a specific container, a specific pod in your Kubernetes cluster, and name it k Executor. k Executor is a, is a single entry point we use, actually, to provide a way to manage all the various backend folders. Once it's that, it will take care of your code and execute it. And if anything goes right, I'm just waiting. It will say execution complete, job done, check directly on the backend platform. If I come here, I should see any minute from now a one compare here, and I can hit a refresh as well, and boom, my workload has been executed. And I can simply go there and it's actually actually to start to evaluate the results, check the train loss, and et cetera, and et cetera, et cetera. So I can do my own changes directly on my GitHub repo, and once I'm ready, basically, I can just re-execute the same code as it is. And again, what will happen while we're waiting, uh, let me do this so we can actually perceive that. While I'm waiting, what I would expect is to see here 
one at some point they saying, hey you got a new uh work a new run there so check it out now for some reason it doesn't show the one today i don't know maybe it's oh hey, it is one you got something new cool there you go and then basically this is a MFLOW capability so i can focus on MFLOW. i can compare the runs it should be exactly the same because i did not change anything but you can literally say okay let me let me check that and actually perceive that how i improve my workflow and goes the same way with the qflow pipelines and later with Airflow, and later with Argo workflows so literally again in a nutshell we literally run in what is it less than 30 minutes from an empty box to a complete AI stack that is running at my disposal without having to learn anything about Kubernetes, everything about uh, deployment, manifest, customize, and chat or whatever. Um, that's it. That's super simple. And in fact, if I'm come here, while I'm saying here and said, okay, well, I don't, I don't know, honestly, in this machine house, I think it's named the same, but Cater AI, please, can, can you tell me what, what is my cluster? Oh, is my cluster as before? Cool. So, Ktr AI plugin deploy while I'm here. Send me something like uh, name Airflow uh, target my cluster. And in the case of probably there's one access status, probably there's an error there. But as you can see, this is what I was interesting. Uh, the first step is I'm using Helm chat here, I'm adding Helm chat for you. And then I'm busy working there. Now there's probably an error because I'm using a, a, a development variable here. But if I double check these plugins, I can actually perceive what we do there as well. So let me show you again in the case of Airflow. Apps, Airflows, cater AML and says, okay, go for the base. In the base, this is an M chart. So the first line says, this is the, this is exactly the documentation of Airflow, by the way. Uh, you need to add the Airflow repo, just in case you don't have it. Then the true way through means I need to expose this to the user in the CLI. You can, you can perceive what is happening. Otherwise, I can actually hide this, create a namespace, and then just go for the install of M chart with again, with the extras. Um, how we can do that? I said we have Two configuration here. The first configuration is about in config, and we got the config JSON. And the config JSON basically is simple as that. It simply says, "This is what you can install. This is what you can, for example, if you want to have the community plugins. So if people want to submit their plugins, we can expose it as a community, not as a core, and, until they are not evaluated. If you have a custom plugin list, uh, and etc." But also, as I said before, we have a, a .k3i folder. In the .k3i folder, what we got? Well, we got the database, of course, but also you see I have a my cluster config. This is what I we create automatically, um, and this uh, actually is a cube config. Why we do that? For a very simple reason. We don't want to overwrite anything on your environment. We are completely agnostic to your environment. And in fact, uh, we also have tools where we actually, we save our version of Cube Controller, our version of MChat, our version in this case of Cibo CLI Club and et cetera. Why we do that again? Because we don't want to overwrite anything there. We take care of everything for you. And that basically, that's it. That's that's what k is. So I'm absolutely happy to, to from here to start and ask any question you can potentially have on the project, how to contribute and etc. And first of all, do you like it? Yeah, uh, amazing, amazing project. Very, very interesting. And uh, absolutely if... stunning. Yeah. Simple uh, intuitive uh, uh, UI. Uh, I, I, very I, useful I have for, a... for... Uh, go, go I, ahead. I, I have a question if it's possible. Yeah. Uh, because uh, it's very clear that uh, this tool uh, could be super helpful uh, and also it's possible to integrate in our uh, deployment pipeline. Uh, but uh, uh, the thing is, uh, if I have understood uh, right, uh, um, 
three AA yeah. is uh, yeah is um, is persisting uh, his states uh, in uh, files yeah. uh, on a machine. Yeah. So uh, how can this can be uh, used uh, in a team of yeah. ML ops or in case of uh, ephemeral agents? Absolutely, great question. That's a really great question. So the reason why we are using Fire right now is just because the limitation of the developer, basically. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Just, to give you, just to give you a bit of history about k 2 k 2 has been developed in two weeks. Uh, and it was an idea between me and another absolute, and he is really a great developer. This is Gabriele Santomaggio, that is now a VMware engineer. He's one of the RabbitMQ maintainers um, worldwide so he's as amazing as a, as a developer thank now, you gabriele um, thank you gabriele now as gabriele usually says hey alex please stay away from the code <laughs> unfortunately for him i, I pick up the, the project and, and and basically rewrite the project the last october completely so the this was simply the easiest way to start while I wrote yeah, the project. but you're absolutely right one of the item that I have open uh, in k is basically moving everything into a, probably in a container and expose as an API stack. So this way, because we have an API stack, I can have the capability to support multi-user. And that means also that I need to probably provide some sort of authentication authorization there as well. Yeah. But doing that, and this uh, unfortunately, this is a really long process to build. But the idea is, first of all, start to move the local DB and everything in uh, in an API stack, where mm -hmm. I can actually I can share those configuration. The second thing is that adding the multi-user means also I can provide better constraints in what you can actually you can run and where. And finally, because this way I can actually can eventually understand where you can run and where not. Now, the, the ideal solution would be that this is acting more or less like an agent, something that goes back to a central point and says, I can have all this knowledge about these clusters and these tools, so I can decide which one to pick up. And in the ideal world, I can literally say, you do the experimentation up to a point where your computer or your laptop or your server is able to run, but if it is not enough, I will automatically select another instance that is more powerful and run, run there. Um, okay. Now, uh, this is a, let's say, I'm targeting this for next year, to be honest. Um, okay. the, 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 the initial, and I look for help, by the way, if yes. anyone so is- At, at, at the moment, the, the workaround could be to use a VM as agent with this, uh, yes. this yes. tool installed. Yes. And uh, use that uh, VMs as- uh, Yes as a repository for configuration yes. and state. Absolutely, absolutely. And I tell you even another thing. Um, the other thing that I'm trying to achieve is for not everything, but for certain kind of plugins, do we a pre-cache of the containers. Uh, for example, in Qflow pipelines, one of the problems you can stumble upon is that if I deploy Qflow pipeline on edge devices or remote devices, they are not completely well connected. For example, for the case of uh, inference services, NVIDIA Triton or Intel Inference Engine and so on. I don't want to go out in the internet, download everything and execute it. I want to pre-cache those containers. So I just need to say, hey, K3i, execute this inference, like more or less like in a serverless scenario. Go there, bring up the containers, run it, destroy the containers, we're done. And, mm -hmm. and I should be in a position where I can say, do this on this group of devices with the idea of uh, instead of running on one single device, let's say that I have 1,000 edge devices. I need to spin up uh, NVIDIA Triton, execute my application, and once it's done, shut down everything or simply wait for another command. And that should be doable. Now, I'm researching, investigating on the cache. I find out a couple of open source projects where you can actually, you can cache some of the pods, but I need to research more. So there's plenty of open room for contribution. And, and with contribution, I really mean just ideas, to be honest. I'm just ideas. Then it's just a question of time. Um, as you can see, I mean, even if I, 
I'm proud to say that I'm a product manager, I'm not a developer, but I've been able to build this in literally one month, rewrite, rewritten everything from scratch. So if I can do it, everyone can do it. As I'm not an expert, I'm, I'm really just, you know, a really normal so, guy. So me as well. <laughs> so so that's so you're welcome to to actually come to the project and, and, give, and share your ideas because that 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 is the first starting point to be honest really this is the starting point uh, another okay. question about the gpu there is a support uh, is a, it's uh, coming absolutely okay. thank you uh, it's coming so in the old k3i that by the way k3i is, is also documented on qflow officially uh and that was a, a great achievement me and gabriele had at the time I, I just issued a new pr to to point qflow to the new k3i so the gpus um i wanted to get them for the v101 that is this version but actually unfortunately i, I missed it because of uh, uh of small bugs that i found it will be there for the 102 that i hope to release around 15 of January or end of January. So GPUs will be there. Now I'm researching because the, um, I will start with NVIDIA GPUs, but I should be able also to include the FPGA operator. So that means that you can, if you, especially if you're in the cloud provider, you can actually use also FPGA as an example to do that. Um, the other thing that actually I'm not yet there, but I'm working is a, is a UI. You got the CLI, that is great. But if you are not in a CI/CD environment where you don't really need automation, probably a, C, a, a web companion UI is, is something that is more useful to, to to people. Where you can actually you can see my idea is literally build a flow where you can plug and play with. I want a cluster, want these plugins, and etc. 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 So, so, just so to... that the user can construct. Uh, simply drag and drop of comp yeah. components. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and there's and there's only two limitations there. The first limitation is that I'm learning not JS. Uh, okay. That is already good, a, a good limitation, by the way. Uh, the second way is this goes back to the to be stateful, and this is why the database is useful. That is like the other the other thing that I need to do. For example, I just release k i for ARM. By the way. You can use K-Train and ARM. Now, I built an MLflow for ARM version for Kubernetes, so you can have MLflow on top of ARM uh, with K-Train, but Qflow is still behind. They're working on it, but still behind. So the thing that I need to do is filter the results based on what you can really install on, on ARM now versus what you cannot install. But I'm, I'm coming there as well with the idea of saying, Hey, I want to run K3I on an ARM device like Jetson Nano, for example, or uh, Raspberry Pi, and I just want to run stuff. And I, I know because I did it as a, as a POC uh, for myself, there was, I can run Emmerflow there. If you look at the packages on the GitHub repo, you will see there's an Emmerflow um, ARM as a tag. If you basically, you use an ARM, you, it will fade the installation right now. Once the installation is failed, you just change the deployment and say, hey, use ARM as image, it will work. Cool. Just to, to, to recap the thing. So k 3 is a, a helpful tool for data scientists, but what is the next step? Meaning I am a data scientist. I don't want to, to bother with installing clusters, etc. Yeah. And But I want to move uh, my experimentation to the next phase. So I want to be, yeah. be in a dev team and then move into production. Yeah. Yeah. How can K3i help me in there? Apart from the CI CD yeah. that you already mentioned. That's exactly what, what you can do. It's like, in order to do, go to the next phase, namely, I'm on a Jupyter, local Jupyter notebook, and I want to experiment against the real platform, Qflow pipelines. So K3i allowed me to deploy the cluster locally or remotely, deploy the Qflow pipeline. So I'm in a position where I can either upload my pipeline to Qflow like the documentation says, or use again K3i to push the pipeline to K3i and be automatically exposed there, like we did with MLflow. And same goes for MLflow. If you are MLOps, K3i is helpful beside the CI CD to experiment as well. Like, 
is there any complexity, for example, to install specific components of Qflow? I'll give you an example. In order to install the Qflow Jupyter notebook, the Jupyter Hub in Qflow, you need the Istio and you need another couple of things there. So that actually can help you because I can just run, okay, K3i, pick up a cluster, AKS, because I'm on AWS, run K3i to deploy the Qflow dashboard, the Qflow Jupyter, and I will find out, oh, I need Istio. That means that in AWS, I need to check out how to use Istio there. So you can spot the, the, the challenges you will face quickly. The other way around is that because you can hack the plugins, you can say something like, this is something that I'm working on, for example, the idea of, well, I can install Qflow, but I also want to install Emberflow, and I won't combine them in the same namespace. So whenever I run a Qflow pipeline, Emberflow will track my pipeline as well because those two tools can be used that way. Or for example, I have a, this, the default Jupyter, Jupyter Lab uh, notebook, not the Qflow one, but I want to inject this one into the Emberflow or into Qflow or into Argo. So can I deploy them in the same namespace? Um, all this stuff is something that an MLOps can be interested in because he can discover problems before time and is working on his own Specific environment. And the data scientist is the same. It's like, as a data scientist, I don't think you need to be aware of Kubernetes. I don't think you need to be aware of manifest how to deploy those tools. Maybe you're a curious person, fine. But reality is that you should be simply focused on your stuff. And your stuff is, I'm writing code. I need to execute code. And to that extent, I don't even need to know how to push this code into Qflow. If I have a tool that tells me, pick up your code and push it, that's it. That's all I need. What I care is log in on Qflow, check my code and say, okay, my code has this problem. Or my code has this, this other problem. That's why, for example, we're exposing k and the GitHub Actions. The idea is to say, you go on the GitHub Action, we will pick up your code directly from Git repo, execute it, so we will take care of all the installation of the components, and why we are running, expose the outcome directly as an issue in your, in your GitHub repo. So you can observe the issue commenting by itself, the output and the results, even with the logs. So you can have in a single issue all the history of your pipeline. This way you basically do not move out from the GitHub repo. You can use things like Visual Studio Code directly there. And literally you just have, every time you do a commit, it will trigger another run of a pipeline. And once you got the right results, let's say that you're looking for an accuracy of 90%, 95%, we can say something like, okay, if you reach out this outcome, accuracy 95%, then deploy this cluster there out of a GitHub repo, rerun the same code with the k executor and go for it, where probably you have GPUs and et cetera. Yeah, uh, it remembers me one year ago when we struggled with making it work in uh, on our own machine, like Kubeflow, install the pipeline, stuff like that. Having a tool like, such as uh, K3i would uh, uh, save us probably weeks, let's say. Weeks yeah, maybe, maybe two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the idea is so simple because the idea was actually come out from, from the same pain that me and Gabriele had. There was, Oh dear, every time I need to install a Kubernetes cluster. And, and the problem is that there's plenty of solution out there like uh, micro Kubernetes, like Minikube, like Kind. But again, you need to research, how can I install Qflow Kind? What are the requirements? What are the, those things? Can I use this? Can I use that? Uh, for example, today I show everything in a Linux machine, but actually I have the same installation on my Windows, uh, Windows Assistant for Linux machine. Um, so that, that is super simple. That, that is literally super simple to do it. Now, now basically it's there. Now, the only thing that I need is like, like well, I am keep seeing my, my slide. I'm, I'm going to just share again my slide for a second. It's literally, I basically have two requests for, for people. Um, let me just do this. Yes. So the, the two requests that basically I have is one, share your ideas if you find bugs, Share your box in the GitHub repo here. If you want to join the Discord server, um, there's not really much activity these days, but it's more a way to, because I, I update from time to time. 
or follow on the Twitter handle. But actually, one thing that actually really help is if you can add a start to the GitHub repo. It's, I know it sounds crazy, but it helps actually to show that this this project is followed by many people and possibly contributed back by many people. So that's that's something that's really helpful because unfortunately for all the open source content maintainers and developers, the, the thing is you do something, you never know actually if this something is useful to people or not. So yeah, great. So that's it. That's that's all, all I can share. I, I said I can I can keep sharing stuff if you want. I mean, is there's there's plenty of stuff there. Uh, what if uh, yeah? The question is, what if I already have a, a an on-prem class in a data center or in some yeah? Machine no, that that's absolutely. Can we, can, yeah. can we use it Kitri I too? So um, in the current status, not yet. Uh, technically speaking. When you do a plugin deploy, if if it doesn't have any information, it should be able actually to run against your cube config. But in the version one zero two, I will add the capability to register your own server. So it will be something like cluster. It will be probably something like register. I think something like that. And register basically will give you just point to your cube config or to the name of cube config. Now I'm still investigating on that because there's a um, a couple of tools that are really nice, like uh, KubeCTX, um, Kube Context, basically, I think it's named. Um, so it allows you basically to switch a context uh, in a more easier way than what I do today. Um, so yes, the idea is you can register your own cluster. Um, and once you register the cluster, I can use it. I just need to have the, the Kube config there. Now, cure stuff. Um, I think I can run it here. Let me just double check if I Docker got installed here. Yes. So cure stuff is like some of those clusters are really, really, really complex to install. So let me just give you an example where we're speaking. Um, cluster deploy uh, dash t tanzu dash name my tanzu cluster. So you see, you will see that I, I have to do a lot of stuff when I create Tanzu because you have to the, the, uh, download two binaries, move those binaries in the path, execute those binaries in a specific certain way. Like Tanzu can install it as a standalone cluster, the way I'm doing there, or as a proper cluster on VMware. I'm not yet there completely. And so it requires a lot of time. But in the very end, Tanzu is just a, a, a kind of, uh, a Docker in Docker installation. So while we are doing this, let me open up. Here it is. I'm moving all the Tanzu. I'm basically exporting the, the tar. Once the tar is there, um, it's moving everything there. Then it starts to work in there. You see, checking Docker. Um, so the identity provider is not configured because I'm using Docker in this case. I can pass an extra to say, hey, you need to install on VMware. Then he's setting up the bootstrapper. Now, behind the scenes, actually, what it does, if I do a watch uh, one dash c uh, docker ps, you can see actually that he's starting to install a first container. This container is the entry point. From the first container, we basically move uh, to a second one, and you see actually. Tanzu Kubernetes uh, kind. This is the control plane. Once it's done that, it will move from the bootstrapper to the proper installation. And once done, basically it will, it will be done. It will move and create the, the containers. In the meantime, it's creating a bunch of folders and files that he's going to use there. Now, I'm not going to comment anything on that. I mean, I'm not saying that it's right or wrong. It's just the way it is right now. Maybe it will change it. So that's, for example, one of the challenges I need to I need to follow back. That is like, if the VMware guys or the Amazon guys or the Civo guys are changing the way their their cluster are being installed, I need to double check that. That's why, that's why the plugins are such a beautiful idea. That is a Gabriele Santomaggio idea, by the way. It's not my idea. I'm just hack a little bit this original idea. That is. If you look at what I'm doing there is, here it is. This is all the stuff I'm doing there. There's a 
a lot of stuff. For example, Tanzu has not storage class default. When you install a local cluster on Tanzu, the, there's no storage class set up as a default. So I have to override this behavior here and say that you need to patch the storage class using the local path from Rancher to be sure that it's default. Otherwise, when I'm trying to install any other plugin, guess what? It will not work. You know, unfortunately, one of the complexity of AI is all these small things. I'll give you another example. When we do, in, when we do run the ML flow, and I can pick up any tools here, uh, where is the sample? This, this one is exactly the sample of ML flow. The problem of this one is that every single MLflow example is missing this requirement, both or three. If you run against Kubernetes, this will fail all the MLflow example. So I'm exposing both or three here, but actually what I'm doing is injecting both or three. If, it, if I don't find both or three in your EML file, on the Conda EML file, I'm injecting both or three automatically for you. I'm taking care of this complexity. Now, the, the funny part for me, but actually it's pretty, it's, there's a pretty great effort there, is you need to take care of all those small things every time. So you need to simplify everything up to the point where basically you are sure that actually is, everything is working as expected. You see that it's still, like he finished the bootstrapper and he started the providers. So probably here we see anytime see something new appears and then from there we start, here it is. Starting create a standalone cluster, double check, you see actually it's there, is create uh, the proxy and probably in a few minutes, the Tanzu cluster will be up and running. And I will show you that basically what I'm doing behind the scenes is that if I check what is happening right now on K2AI, I can see there's now the TC, this is the, this is the cluster, there's a, there's a a folder there, and inside the folder is basically it's installing everything there. And then you will create a, a Tanzu cluster folder here where you expose the cube and the, the cube config and etc. So this this is based, this is it. This is actually the why K3 AI to me sounds like a, a good solution. It's a good solution because you don't need to know all this stuff. For what it stands. You don't even have to write, read the the, the Tanzu documentation, the Tanzu community documentation. You just use K3i, done it, and uh, get an exit status. By the way, so for example, this is an example now. Probably there's uh, some. Oh, there it is. It was trying to save because I exp oh, I know why because I override the cube config. You remember that I, I override the cube config to show you that I was running the cluster, and now it was trying to save him not in the original queue config, but in the range of config where it doesn't have the, the property to run there. And it failed. This is a pretty good example. If I'm a data scientist, I'm not interested in debugging this. I don't care. And by the way, now everything is, now everything is, unfortunately for me, is dirty. I need to remove everything there and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to handle this. I don't want to face this. That's 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 the, the reality. Uh, Alessandro, no, please yep. uh, share again the slide with uh, the link, uh, the useful links. Yep. yep. Just a sec. Before closing, uh, I suggest to uh, I'm inviting everyone to there you go. Give a star at the start to this project. It's a simple. So yeah, come you on. just need to go K3i slash K3i again, by the way. Hit the star and I'm happy. You make me happy. I mean, just to say, well, like Lamenta actually, I I put my Christmas shirt just for you. That's I mean, that's just that should be you a star. <laughs> Good. Oh, good, thank good, you. Good. Very, very interesting project. Uh, congratulations, Alessandro. Also, Gabriele for the initial version. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Really, really appreciated. Yes. Yeah, so, super project. Very useful for us. That <laughs> <laughs> that work with this stuff. And uh, I've uh, started live the project. So. <laughs> 
Cool. Thank you. So, so Alessandro, the presentation was good because uh, Matteo already gave you a star. Give to the project. Thank you very much. No, no for your uh, Christmas uh, dress. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone. Please add the star. It's a very, very simple. It can uh, give a good and useful boost to this project. Uh, we can't wait to, to see other uh, supported uh, backends, other cluster. Uh, I think that uh, can save uh, a lot of time to data scientists and also to a model engineer that uh, don't want to spend uh, much time uh, only to test uh, some code. Uh, it, it's a very, very useful as a project. So contribute in, in any way from a simple star to uh, APR. <laughs> and if you have comments or questions, please write it down in the chat and uh, in the coming days or as soon as Alessandra some time can, can answer back or we can answer back if, you, if we can. Yeah, absolutely. See you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.